too casual. Hmm. What else I got? It's too hot for this. Yeah, that's better. Nico, are you ready to go to the post? Okay. <laughs> Coming. Welcome to Gifted Afflicted, where I I truly believe our absolute greatest weaknesses, afflictions, struggles through sheer grit, hard work, determination can be turned into our absolute most beautiful strengths and gifts, in my case, in recovery, but just in general in life for most people. I'm a firm believer in that, and that is the purpose and like the core behind my channel. So every week I enjoy sharing um, just a variety of topics. Sometimes it's more like family focused. Sometimes it's more uh, related to my small business. And sometimes it's more personal relating to my 14 year battle with drug and alcohol addiction. I was addicted to any and all substances, mostly hard substances, mostly coke and ice. And no, I'm not talking about the soft drink, but I was addicted to that too because I am at my core an absolute addict. I can get addicted to anything. This channel is proof I got addicted to food in my recovery and I'm still struggling to get the weight off the pandemic. I used it as an excuse, but now I'm back on track. And in a nutshell, that's where we sit today. And let's have a chat about the tortured artist trap that I fell into. I'm also going to share with you projects that I enjoyed upcycling. Upcycling, to anybody that doesn't know, is basically taking um, materials that have been, in my case, like discarded materials and repurposing them and turning them into something else entirely. On this particular upcycling video, I'm also including anything that I had laying around the house that I wasn't using and that I was either wanting to get rid of or wanting to turn it into something that I could use again. That's my version of upcycling for the purposes of this video. Sometimes the things I upcycle, I upcycle to sell on one of my shops. Sometimes the things I upcycle, I just do it just because, just to be creative. Like that mask in the beginning of the video. I just did that just to be silly and creative while I was waiting for my school, waiting for my son's class. So first let me touch on what I call the tortured artist trap, which is what I fell into during my drug addiction. And it's basically what, and it's basically that I felt that I was at my best, most creative, most um, like, I felt like I had to be high or drunk to create to my greatest potential. I know that probably sounds crazy, but as an artist, I've worked with a lot of other artists, I've hung out with a lot of other artists, and living on the West Coast for a short period of time, even in the rooms of AA and NA, I encountered quite a few artists, so I know this is definitely, so I know this is definitely a problem that is very prevalent among artists, and the common theme we all had was we thought that when we were, we thought that we had to be f***ed up to create like this, this crazy great art. We thought that I, let me just speak from my experience, but I thought that when I was f***ed up, that was when I was in my best creative mode at like my highest level of creativity, uninhibited and able to create freely without um, all these like th all these things that would inhibit me to you know just be creating naturally without thought or worry I was in like this carefree headspace kind of like the saying you know head in the clouds I was I was free free to create free to be free you know <laughs> I sound like I'm sounding like Okay, now I hear it. This kind of sounds like hippy dippy, whatever, but that's where my mind went. Okay, so of course I resisted the idea of getting sober because as an artist, I'm like, 
that's gonna suck, you know? My life is gonna be boring. What am I gonna do? Um, who am I gonna hang out with? What am I gonna make? What, what would that even look like? To me, sobriety looked like stifled creativity, a lot of rules, regulations, me just being, you know, like, suffocated. That's what sobriety looked like from from my point of view then. Now quickly just what I want to express is that is a trap. That is the tortured artist trap in my opinion because when I became sober, yes, for a long time I didn't feel like I could make... I couldn't figure out find my way back into being an artist. It took a long time because I had a lot of issues. I had a lot of issues I had to work through before I could kind of get to that next phase. So I had to work through why I started to use drugs in the first place. I had to start peeling off the masks. See what I did there? <laughs> the mask. <laughs> the masks um, are like all these external layers I had, these, um, these disguises I wore. Uh, pretending to be okay when I wasn't, um, becoming somebody I wasn't, people pleasing so that they would feel like I was fine, things were fine, it's all good, you know. Those masks were covering up my deeper issues and when I had the mask on, nobody could really connect with me truly because that was always blocking um, my true genuine self the masks were just covering up all the different things that I didn't want people to know about me and I didn't want people to see. And so when I started to work on that stuff, then I started to slowly be able to discover what it means to be an artist in recovery. And I started to discover that I feel more in tune with I feel more in tune with my creativity and my sobriety, and I feel more free than I've ever felt. Ironic, yes, but it is true. All the things that I thought were, all the things that I thought were giving me freedom in my addiction were actually the things that were slowly putting shackles on me. And only in my recovery was I able to see the drugs, the alcohol, it was holding me back, but I had to take time away from it a really long time to start to realize that that was actually just a crutch that I was leaning on to get through a hard day, to get through a good day, to get through a bad day, to get through any day, um, to make something, to go to work, basically to do any function because my addiction took me to the point where I was physically dependent on the drugs, meaning if I didn't use, I went, I went into withdrawal, I I got very sick, I got very shaky, I got very unstable as a person. Those are the times that I attempted to take my own life was when I was detoxing. Um, so all that just to say now I'm able now I'm able to make art in my recovery unlike I thought was possible in my addiction because I always had all of that um, stuff clogging up my brain and yeah, I could create when I was high and I could, oh, I could tell you a few stories about that. I went on some really crazy artist trips when I think back on it. I remember one guy, he was, I had him convinced that I was going to be a songwriter. This was like my calling. I would spend countless hours just smoking. And he assigned me a mobile home that I could be in charge of. Basically, I could live there. Uh, he gave me meals as needed. Shelter, obviously, was the mobile home. Inlet, and he supplied all of my drugs. In exchange, I wrote songs and then read them to him. And he was like yes, we're going to do this, like, we're going to go on the road, you're going to be writing these songs, such and such is going to perform them. It was a whole thing. What about the time I was in the homeless shelter and this guy was leaving, he's like, I'm getting ready to go out in the desert on a peyote exploration. Do you want to come with? I was like, <laughs> at least at that time, I was like, no, <laughs> I don't think that's going to end well. Out in the middle of the desert on a peyote trip, that just seems to me like a recipe for disaster given my track history. The point is, 
I've written better sober, I've drawn better sober, I've had better ideas sober, ideas that were more realistic and enjoyable, I wasn't impeding on anybody else's family life and or draining them financially for my artistic ventures. Today I can do this stuff relatively um, inexpensively and I enjoy it a lot more because I'm present. I'm in the moment. I remember it. So it's very cool and I just want to shed light on that in case there's anybody out there that struggles with that thought of I'm not going to be a good artist. I'm not going to be able to create. I'm going to have this block when I get sober. And you might have the block for a little bit. I had it for quite a bit. Um, I definitely had it in detox. I couldn't even think of anything else. I couldn't think of art or anything like that for quite a while. I just, I had, once the voices in my head stopped, I was able to start, start creating again. But um, yeah, that's kind of a long story. But I don't think that's going to be a great thing to talk about today. <laughs> but for today, let's let's go ahead and veer off into some of the upcycles. Voice over Jackie, signing on. Don't judge me. I'm laying in bed as I make this. Okay, so I'm just prepping these. A lot of times I pick up containers and things that... I like the shape of them or the material. In this case, I like that shape of like that lace looking detail. And I like the material that it's metal, it's sturdy, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm tired. Basically, I'm just sanding these down and then I'm going to wash them with soap and water and then I'm going to spray paint them just because this white doesn't go with my decor. I personally, I know a lot of people aren't going to like these upcycles because I'm basically just painting a lot of these things darker color, black, like a rust-oleum, almost like a crackled, uh, almost like a rust color, really. But that's what I like. So I get items like this for cheap at the thrift store and or craft store sometimes or estate sales. And then I just spray it so that it matches my decor and then I can, you know, have items that just are different and they appeal to me but that not everybody else is going to have the same ones because I've made it to match like my aesthetic or the aesthetic that I'm working towards let's just say I'm definitely not a decorator so yeah I kept things really simple this week sometimes it's not so much about what I'm making but just that I need to be making something just for my overall sanity, being a stay-at-home, like, teacher assistant to my son with virtual learning has been very stressful, and so sometimes I just need a fast and quick little creative escape. So, yeah, I see a lot of thrift flip and creative videos in the future, for sure, for sure, for sure. Stress relief for me. <laughs> So I'm challenging myself to use things that I already have at home or that I've thrifted. And I'm trying not to buy a whole lot more all the way through till the end of the year. So we'll see how many things I can flip that I have laying around. These were... I have no idea where these came from, honestly. I think I bought them and then I forgot what I wanted to use them for. So these are just going to... One's going to sit on my desk, and the small one, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. But this is what it looks like after, and sorry, this is basically as clean as my desk gets. So yeah, my headphones and stuff sits in there, and voila, I need to work on my after, clearly. Most people would love this one as it is. I just don't like gold-toned, gold-colored things. Um, it's almost a bronze, so I almost considered it, but it was like, no, I want it to be black, <laughs> of course. So now it's black. It sits on my little shelf in my room. And then I have a frame that kind of goes with it that I put a little fabric swatch in. And I'll show you that. So they kind of play off each other. And I just like that. I can see, I can see the detailing better in person. I'll try to show you a little bit. Um, but I just really love it and now I actually use it, so it's a win, it's a keeper. 
Okay, on to the next. So I have these leopard print pajama pants that I can't sell. And I love the pattern and they're kids pants, but I want to turn it into some sort of an accessory. And I'm going to try my hand at making women's beanies. And I got all these like plain t-shirts from a wholesale box that was crap. And I'm going to try to reuse them as the lining maybe and then try and decide which ones I want to use as the outside of the beanie. The leopard is a yes. That's a yes. Let's go. Check it out. I am officially maker of beanies and leg warmers. Why I wanted leopard leg warmers. Completely random. Leopard beanie. It's official. I love making beanies. I'm gonna start adding these to my Poshmark closet. Because I just love um, making them. I thought those were super simple. I needed something stress-free. I even made the little faux fur pom-pom out of a vintage vest. And I added a little baby accessory to the top of that one. But I think it's super cute. Love that. I love that. I love how all the hats came out. I didn't love modeling them. I felt super ridiculous trying to get pictures so up close of my face in all its adult acne glory and about as awkward as modeling earrings. So let's check out that awkward glory and call it a day. And that's a wrap. So thanks for hanging out today. Let me know what you thought of these upcycles. Do you upcycle things? Do you take things that you're not using and kind of morph them into something else? I think that my favorite is just painting and spray painting stuff because it's so fast and so instant. And a lot of times it's like the most dramatic difference is just those those paint jobs. So let me know if you do any of this stuff and if you have videos on it, I'll go check them out and support your channel too. And otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Peace. Thanks for watching.